Hi, this is Dawn, and I'm going to show you how to remove a convection blower on a Quadrifier Classic Bay 1200 freestanding stove. There's two screws in the back of this, and these there's a, a bracket in the back, which I'm going to show you in a second here. This is the side of the stove, and I'm going in this way. You can see where the motor is there, and there's a bracket right in there. Let's see if you can... Oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see that. So here is how to remove it. First of all, you want to make sure that you unplug it. Where? Oh, you can see it there. Okay. So you unplug the stove. Hey, look at that. Unplug the stove. And of course, turn your thermostat down, the whole deal. Make sure your stove is not running. That's pretty obvious, but hey, just in case. Okay, so we've got... This is the connection. Uh, there you go. There's a a little loop here that's usually with a tie and they're all kind of like that so you want to make sure that you undo that uh, just use a pair of scissors or a pair of pliers and uh, twist it off or cut it off and just make sure not to mar any of the wires so there's a little a little connector here you just pull it apart Make sure you put your screws in a safe place so you know where they came from. And then you sort of tilt it downward. See as I'm doing here, see it's up like this and you tilt, tilt it down and then you kind of wiggle it out. Today we're going to show you how to clean a convection blower for a quadrifier Classic Bay 1200 freestanding model. Um, I don't know if this is the same as the insert, but I'm assuming so. I did a lot of looking at videos on YouTube and found that there was no video for this. So I'm hoping this helps everybody because I've been getting a severe vibration from the pellet stove and it's making the uh, the top of the stove, the lid shake and vibrate, and it's making the little rods, the pull rods for the heat exchanger, making those shake. I've put shims underneath and stuff, and finally somebody said to me, Hey, did you ever clean your convection blower? And I said, Well, I was able to get at these, but upon taking it apart, I realized the last eight years I have not been cleaning the inside because there's a squirrel cage that's here, and there's two sides to clean. Hmm, it would have been nice if somebody showed me that, so then I wouldn't have to deal with this vibration and lots of swearing at my pellet stove. So, the first thing that you're going to need is a pair of uh, needle nose vice grips or pliers. There's a uh, little clamp, okay? And you gotta take the little vice grips and put it over the clamp. So. Okay, so I've got it over the clamp, and hopefully I can get the flashlight in there. See, I've got it over the clamp there, and you're supposed to wiggle this out. So let me see if I can do this on the camera. You, you just, you wiggle it out, but this is, this is the little clamp here, and this is, this is what you're clamping, these little, these little wings here. You want to clamp it like that, and then just kind of wiggle it off, and you want to do that to the other side of the other squirrel cage, which I took that off there. All right, so that's that tool. Now, here's the most difficult of this thing. I could not figure this out, and finally I said, hmm, let's try this. The squirrel cages literally need to be wiggled out. Now, inside of there is this little nub, and what I did is I, I put the pressure of these on that little, little nub, It would just squeeze it enough. Uh, let me see. I got, there we go. Just so that it's lightly on there and you can give it a tug and it won't come off. So then I held this side and the squirrel cage here. As I'm turning, let's see. Yeah, this is fun to figure out in the first place. Come on. As I said, if you can get this done, oh, I position this. Is... 
you pull, yeah, you pull and it comes off. Oh, no, not, not tight enough. Okay. You gotta be very careful with this because you could break the plastic of the squirrel cages, so. That's the noise of this. Notice the squirrel cage is starting to come loose on this side. There we go. All right, it's off. To do the other side, turn it around. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of, I'm cupping this and kind of pulling forward with my fingers as I'm doing this. So I'm kind of, if, if you can kind of see this, I'm kind of, see how my hand's cupped. I'm kind of holding that and, and moving my fingers forward as I'm twisting this. Come on. Now you gotta make sure that when you're pulling, you're pulling the squirrel cage past this lip. Ah, there we go. Okay. Now, I've, I've already done this and I've already cleaned this. And I said to myself, well, you know what? I'm gonna do a video of this. I figure that I could try this because to replace this, it's about 300 to $350. And I figured, well, let's try it this way. So now you take this off and you probably notice that all your squirrel cages are very, very dirty. Uh, if you've never done this, uh, which we've had the stove for about eight years, although we bought it used, it's probably been in service for 15, 16 years. And I've never done this, which I probably should have learned a long time ago, but nobody told me. So um, now hopefully that you'll learn from my mistake. So the squirrel cages, you just take these and you can put these in your sink and you can use like a little basin or something and then clean out all these. It, if you use a paintbrush, this is about a one inch paintbrush. This works wonderfully. You just put it in and you go flip, 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 like that. You can make the funny noises if you want, but you know, you don't have to. <laughs> so um, you can use some mild dishwashing soap and really clean it. And you clean the tie, clean the insides, you let it dry. And then you can even take a, this is a, a thin brush and you can kind of just stick it through the center there. All right, so then you wait for those to dry. Now in the meantime, you're gonna wanna clean this bad boy. This guy, uh, you're gonna need a, the same one inch brush. Now keep in mind that I've already used this, so it's all a little frayed. And the same thing with this little guy. This is a half inch brush. And I've used both of these in conjunction with this. And now the center of here, this gets all sorts of, all sorts of dust. You got to clean all that out. It's good to have a vacuum uh, hose attachment when you're doing this. Uh, so you can vacuum that in here, vacuum. So you're going to be going like this, like this. You got to get every little nook and cranny, every little nook and cranny in here and here and here and here. Now inside of here, there's also, let's see if you can see this, there's also areas where you want to stick the brush in here which you can you can kind of see just just stick that in there um, there's part where the, you can see the motor part in there and this you want to clean down too because this is usually full of ash and debris as you can see I've already cleaned it because this was really nasty you want to make sure that you get especially in these little areas where you can see and here, there's uh, where the spokes are. You want to kind of clean that air. You want to take a rag and clean out all this. Uh, get that all nice, nice. There are four. There are four bolts that are in here. If yours is really, really rusted, you might consider taking some high temperature paint. You know, spray painting it outside or something or someplace where people aren't going to be smelling it for a while because that stuff's nasty. 
And the other thing I did was uh, this had some rust on the stems on this little uh, shaft. Uh, let me see if I can get this. The little shaft thing here. And what I did is I took some sandpaper. This is fine sandpaper. You could use uh, like 150 sandpaper or 220 or probably even a higher number than that. But this worked fine. I think, I think this is 150. And I took it, as you can see, the, all the little dirt on here. I took it and I wrapped it around the stem and I was moving it back and forth. And also on the other side, you hold this while you're doing that and then you can turn it at, so in other words, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm turning it so that I can get the whole shaft. And now the shaft is really nice and the way it's supposed to be because it had a little bit of rust on it and that was having a little hard time trying to get the squirrel cages off in the first place. Also, there's a little piece of this uh, fiberglass gasket stuff that looks like it came off here, so I might have to just make sure I use a little uh, silicone there or something, some probably high, high uh, temperature silicone. After you've cleaned the squirrel cage, let them dry, and you've cleaned this guy, you want to put the squirrel cages back on. So, it's very important to put these on the correct way. So as it's positioned like this, the squirrel cage, it has the fins going sort of in, they almost look like waves of the ocean where they're kind of curved upwards. Well, you want to put that curve so the curve is like my hand here. You can kind of see it's, it's curved this way. So in other words, it's sort of like it's pointing, the, the bottom ones are pointing towards you because this should be the way that you took it off. So now you put that in one side and you push it, push it down with your fingers and see how far you can get with it. If you can't get it all the way down, then you can use, uh, like I've got a wooden piece of dowel here and a little mallet and I just gently tap Uh, you'll know when you get it correct because the stem, is, the end of the stem is, is flush with the top of the squirrel cage. So that's, imp that's important because that's the way it came off. And then you want to do the other side. The, the squirrel cages are they look identical on each side. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter if you put them in this way or whether you put them in this way, just so long as the fins are the proper uh, position. So, so on both sides, when you have the bracket towards you, then you take the squirrel cages and put them so that they're, they're running towards you. All right, so running towards me. Push that one in a little bit. Be very gentle with this because it is plastic. You just want to give it light taps. You can almost hear the, you can hear the pitch change too. You can hear it kind of tap, 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 and all of a sudden it sounds like a clunk. And then you take the little clamps back this together like that. So when you're taking the clamp, if you can see this here, okay, so the clamp is got these, assuming of course that you have the same clamp, the clamp has got these little wings on it. And when you put the little wings on, you want to make sure that you're, sorry, you're putting the, the wings so that two of them are against one of the, one of the blades of the, of the vice grips. Okay, and then the end of this should be equal. You take the clamp and you slide it over the plastic little stem piece there. And you want to slide it all the way down and release it. So you want to, you want to remember how this was when you took it off. But the clamp goes on like it was and I hope you can see that in there. I'm going to put the other side back on. 
So I'm going to clamp this. Now, when you use the vice grips, when they're closed, they're only about, oof, that's like maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Because you don't want to clamp it too hard. It's just enough to be able to easily put the clamp back on and then you just release. Now, the way you can tell is if you've got your blowers on correct, is if you, let's see, yeah, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. If you spin it this way, you can actually feel air coming out of that. And that's it. And that's how you can clean it and then put it back in. See this, this bracket right here? You want to hook that end into this part right here. So let's see if we can get that going on here. And you kinda... Here we go. All right, so you get that hooked in there. And then you put your two screws back. Oh, rather than boring you with that, I'll get that after. But after you've got the two screws in here, this is a plastic molded connector thing, assuming, of course, that this is the connector you have. This connector only fits one way. There's a little point and there's a little point in here, so you got to align the points, put that in there. And there, if you want to, you can put another tie back here or use a uh, piece of like uh, flexible bendable metal maybe um, just not something with paper on it uh, like a paper wire tie you don't want to use that and then uh, you plug your stove you plug your stove back in and you're all done